Also, du willst Deutsch lernen, aber du weißt nicht, wo du anfangen sollst. Ich kann dir damit helfen. Ich habe Deutsch seit vier Jahren studiert, aber manchmal glaube ich, dass mein Deutsch so schlecht ist, weil äh, nach der Highschool ich eine große Pause gemacht habe und ich glaube, dass mein Deutsch <lacht> verschwunden ist. Hallo zusammen, ich bin Alice und heute werde ich euch einige Tipps geben, um zu Deutsch lernen. Ich spreche Deutsch, ich liebe Deutsch und ich glaube, dass mein Deutsch ganz okay ist. I just thought I would do a little intro in German, just so you guys can see my progress a little bit. I'll make an actual progress video soon, but yeah. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are talking about German. So as you guys know, I've been studying German since I was 15 in high school. I studied it my sophomore and my junior year of high school, but I wasn't really digging it due to the teacher that I had, so I kind of abandoned it for a long time. I definitely left it alone for my senior year of high school and for my freshman year of college. Um, and I wasn't really interested in it until the beginning of 2019 again. So like almost two and a half to three years, I didn't speak German. German is too high maintenance of a language to leave it alone for that long. I feel like it was really time to challenge myself at the beginning of the year. So I came back to Deutsch and it has been so fun. I've been having so much fun learning German, like more fun than I had studying Portuguese. So yeah, and you guys have seen on my language Instagram, at uh, Elise Speaks, that I've been studying German and I've been getting a lot of questions like, hey, what resources do you use? What online resources, books, podcasts, and what's your routine? Like what helps you learn German? So I thought I would show you guys what a typical German week looks like for me. You know, what I do for reading comprehension, what I do for listening, what I do for vocabulary, what I do for speaking, all of those. There's gonna be like sections to this video so I can just very clearly show you what I use, why I like it, etc 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 lessons on funny let's start so here's what you'll need internet connection your preferred grammar books mine happen to be hammer's german grammar and usage and this german grammar drills book by ed swick two pens one black one in a color of your choice to mark any mistakes earbuds motivation and time also this is kind of part of a materials thing but it's also part of my motivation so what I do is I have a whiteboard that I write my language goals on every single day. It is right here, and I will cut to Elise in the past to show you what I do with it. Time warp. One linguistic thing that I learned or want to learn today. Having a language board is really helpful to me because it allows me to set realistic goals. You know, you don't build a house without having bricks first, and these are the bricks. So it's important to set daily goals for yourself and really just focus on the little things because Little things make up the big things. And I feel like, you know, even if I had a really busy day, as long as I did one or any of these things, I did something. You know, I don't have a class, so it's important for me to still give myself some guidance. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the whole language board concept. Good for motivation, good for feeling like you're making progress. And it's just like a nice ritual that I can have with myself every day. Say, Elise, what are we going to do today? That's it. Cool. Thank you for that, Elise. I have not always been such a fan of reading comprehension, probably because I'm scarred from IB language courses, <laughs> but I've come to acknowledge that it is necessary and it's a super good way to, I guess, get vocab. Plus, you know, for my language certification tests, I always have to do reading comprehension, so there's no way to avoid it. So for German, what I use is German.net. It's very simple. You go to the website and you click reading, and they have all these different samples of um, reading comprehension for different levels like A1, a2, B1, B2, I don't think they have any C-level reading comprehension, but at that point, if you're looking for C-level reading comprehension, you can just go to regular German news sites like Die Zeit or something like that. But German.net is super cool because their reading comprehensions have like little five or six question quizzes after it so that you can kind of simulate what would like an actual German certification test be like. And it's just a good way to like casually test your German, get new vocab, whatever you want to do. So let's talk about the exciting stuff, which is grammar. Grammar! Everybody loves grammar. I love studying grammar. It makes me feel so like secure when I know why things are. So like I showed you guys before, I have two books that I do for German grammar. This one is just called German Grammar Drills. Um, it's by Ed Swick. It has like a bazillion pages and it also has a answer key in the back. So I'll do maybe like three to four exercises um, depending on if I'm using it that day or not and then after I will go check it 
And it is super satisfying when I'll go through an exercise and realize that I got nothing wrong. This book is great because it has explanations that are really succinct and it makes German make sense. What people would say about German all the time is that it has so many irregularities and that it's so crazy. But this kind of like makes you realize all the rules that it has. Let me just one more time. German Grammar Jewels, Ed Swick, super good book for beginners and intermediate learners. And this other one I don't use as much, but it's still super useful if I need explanations. It's um, Hammer's German Grammar and Usage. It's the second edition. So like I said, the other book, the German Grammar Jewels book, has explanations, but if I need like an in-depth explanation with tons of examples, I will consult this. It's a little old. I don't know when it came out. It came out in 1983. <laughs> I probably would buy a newer edition. I'm just very cheap. It, German can't have changed that much in like 50 years, right? Right? But the point is, this is super good for consulting in depth, um, super good for exceptions, examples, all that jazz. It has sections for everything imaginable. And I really do like this book as well. You can't study grammar casually. You have to have a book, in my opinion. In my humble opinion, since I have to say that before everything because the polyglot community loves to fight over, you know, should we use books? Should we not use books? And moving on, another thing that I do for grammar is song translations. So you guys know that I love to listen to music in all types of languages. So what I do is I just take the lyrics, I write them down in black as they are, and I will underline, put question marks or boxes or just notes around anything that I'm curious about that I don't quite understand. And afterwards, I will go through and write the translations, or what I think are the translations, in red. Now, for translating, this is the most important step because it's, you have to actually have it right. Um, so two websites that I use for my translations are Lingui and Reverso, and these are so, so, so good because they give you context. So they take articles or places where this phrase appears online, and they put it side by side with the English translation or whatever translation of your native language is. So it's not just like a phrase, it gives you context and it helps you to see different ways that it can be translated into your native language. So for this type of thing, for phrases and expressions, I will only use Lingui and Reverso because I trust them with my life. But for just words and like sing simple things, I will go to word reference. Word reference is super good because it gives you the word in every single meaning that it has. So it's not just gonna give you one flat meaning, it will give you every definition and it also gives you examples, sentences for every single definition. So if you're still using Google Translate in 2019, my guy, it's time. There's so many good translators other than Google Translate. Y'all have got to stop using Google Translate, I swear to God. But yeah, so after I translate it, then I will go through and write in the margins, just reminders, like grammatical reminders, like, oh, there's a subject and verb inversion here due to the time word. You know, this zu right here is optional. What's the difference between Einsamkeit and Alleinsein? You know, like simple things like that. So it's reminders, um, and I just annotate it as much as I can without making it too chaotic. So you have to find that sweet middle of not making it overcomplicated and also being thorough. Moving on to listening. So for listening, I should do more listening practice, um, but I really am just like a grammar addict. But when I do listen, which is maybe two to three times a week, I will break open the Coffee Break German podcast. They have podcasts for so many other languages. Well, not like a ton, but they have Coffee Break Italian, Coffee Break Spanish, Coffee Break French. They even have Coffee Break Chinese. So what I do with the podcast is I listen to it before bed. The episodes tend to be about 20 minutes along, so I will listen to it right before I get super sleepy. And I wake up and I listen to it right again just so I can really solidify the phrases in my brain and talk along with it. I love Coffee Break German because it's very basic German and it helps me to solidify my foundation. They have like um, a cultural correspondent in their episodes named Julia. She's pretty cool, love her. But they also have a grammar guru. So like she gives you small little tips on like here's the nominative case, here's subject verb inversion with time words and like small things like that. So for being a basic podcast it really is comprehensive. Okay anyway so also for listening I watch NDR documentaries. NDR has like these super good documentaries that are usually 40 minutes long um, and it's about like society and science and food, health, agriculture, like all these different things. And you guys know that I'm such a big advocate of 
learning about the societies of the language that you're learning instead of just learning the language you feel so it helps you to sort of immerse yourself without being immersed so yeah i will watch maybe like two of them a week i will watch them multiple times just so like the first time i just watch it and i absorb it the second time i watch it and i write down words that i see repeatedly so i love ndr they have super good documentaries and the subtitles are not auto-generated they're like actually written subtitles that someone revises so they're all super accurate and I highly recommend it. And lastly for listening, duh, I listen to German music. Some of my favorite German artists are like Bausa, Kroll, Aligatoa, what's that girl's name? Namika? I love Shirin David. She, like I love rap and so of course I'm gonna love German rap as well. You'll know I love female rappers. So when it's a female rapping in German, I'm like, if I can study German while I listen to rap, like no contest, no contest. I don't care if you think German sounds angry or if you think it's an aggressive language, German music is awesome, so go listen to some. So at some point you just gotta forget everything. You gotta forget reading comprehension, you gotta forget listenings, you gotta forget like grammar. Sometimes you just need to practice some vocabulary. This was a big problem for me because I was focusing so much on German grammar recently that I totally abandoned like having actual words to use the grammar with. So for vocabulary, I am a basic bitch. I use Duolingo, I use memorized cards, I use Quizlet sets, both ones that I make and ones that other people make. So yeah, it just helps me personally because it's tailored to what I need. And you know, people have already made like tons of Quizlets online. So go use what other people have made as well as make your own. And finally, let's talk about what it all boils down to speaking. You know, the proof is truly in the pudding. After all this studying and all this memorization, can you actually put it into practice? So for speaking, whether you're using an actual tutor or just finding a language partner, italki is where it's at. So italki is a great little app. It's, a, it's also a website where you can find language partners and you can find language teachers either professional or just community tutors that will help you get conversation practice. So I'm a teacher on italki, I'm a professional English teacher, and what's cool about italki if you're a teacher is that you can use the credits that you get from your lessons to pay for lessons. So I, you know, I take one class per week. I just do conversational German. Yeah, I usually take my lesson at the beginning of the week just so I can make mistakes and know what I can work on for the rest of the week. So if it's really, really important to you, I think it's definitely worth it to pay for maybe like eight to fifteen dollars a week just for maybe an hour-long lesson. I'd say that it's definitely been like really transformative for me because I can use it on my computer at home or I can use the italki app when I'm out and about um, so I can have my lessons anywhere that I want. Yeah, that is pretty much it my guy. That is how I learned German. Speaking, vocabulary, grammar, listening, reading comprehension. I don't know what other aspect of language there is but um, if you have any questions you can definitely ask me in the comments or send me a DM on my Instagram at Elise Speaks, that's E-L-Y-S-S-E-S-P-E-A-K-S, -S -E -S baby. And yeah, if I had never taken a break after high school, I probably would be like throwing mad German right now, but say la vie. Yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't really post for a couple weeks. Like I had midterms and it was just super crazy. You know, school comes first, it really does. So that was that. I love German, beep beep boop. Um, that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys next time with a new video. Thank you so much for watching and as we say in German, tschüss.